Hello everybody, this is Vicious, and welcome to another wonderful day of doing something fun and technical. So what we are going to be walking through today is going to be a fan modification on my new Brocade 6450. Now I just bought this switch with the anticipation that it was going to be a nice and silent switch, or at least fairly quiet. And unfortunately it was not. It was actually louder than my Aruba S2500 switches that I just bought. And I already did a fan mod on one of those, so I definitely had to do a fan mod on this. So what I'm liking about the Brocade switches, besides how cool they look, I love the black and red color scheme, is they're just super high-end enterprise class switches. Much better capacitors, better power supplies, a higher PoE uh, limit than the Aruba switches, a more fully featured command line. I mean, it's just a really solid switch. And so I'm definitely going to invest a little bit of time into making it my own and making it nice and quiet. So let's talk a few administrative items real quick before we jump into what's going on in the video. First of all, I did intend for this to be a live, real-time walkthrough of what I was doing. I was going to do an unscripted walkthrough. I was wearing my microphone and talking through this whole procedure. And unfortunately, somehow I managed to hit the record button not once, but twice back-to-back -back on my little recorder. And I didn't record the first half of the audio on the clip. And that left me with only my camera audio, which is really terrible. And I wouldn't make you guys watch a video with terrible audio. So we're just going to go ahead and voice over everything and I'll hit the main points as we go. That also means I get the opportunity to speed up the footage and that's good too because I should make the video a little bit shorter because at full length it was over 30 minutes. So let's talk about what's going on here in the video. What I've done is I've already taken the top of this switch off and I took a digital multimeter and I'm trying to read the pin fan headers as far as what the different color wires on the original fans are corresponding to. The original wire colors are yellow, green and black and that is not a traditional wire color for a three pin fan where we usually have black red and yellow so you would think that the two colors that are the same would be ground and sensor and the last one the green one must be power but i wanted to verify that so i went ahead and tested and it's a good thing i did because it is not the case so the first thing i did was with the switch powered off i put one connector for continuity on the actual switch body on the metal and then I took one to the black wire and sure enough I got continuity which means we confirmed that black is ground so that's a good place to start. Knowing what my ground was the next thing I did was I went ahead and powered on the switch knowing I can place one on ground and then do a voltage test on the other two wires. One of them is going to be 12 volts and that will be our main power source and then the other one's going to be a lower voltage which will be our sensor wire. The next thing I want to do real quick is go back to the real-time footage and let the audio kick up for a second just so you can hear the stock fans with how loud they are when the switch boots and then once it gets done loading. So as you can certainly hear, the fans are pretty loud at startup. Once the switch loads, they go back down and they're not too loud. My measurements with my sound meter was about 75 decibels at the load up and about 55 decibels once the switch was completely loaded. Now as far as the results with the multimeters, as far as the testing goes, we were able to verify that black was the ground. And what I found out was that the yellow wire is actually going to be my 12 volt and my green wire was the sensor, and that does not correspond to the standard colors on a regular fan, where black is ground, red is your 12 volt, and yellow is your sensor. So what you see me doing here in the video is using a small flat head screwdriver, and I'm pulling out the pins for the yellow and the black wires and reversing them to get them into the right order. After I had done that for a single fan, the first thing I did was plug that fan in and power it back on, just to make sure I see the fan spinning and everything's working like it should including spinning down once the switch loaded and all that was working good. So I carried through for the same process with the other two fans. 
The process of pulling the pins out of the fan header were not really too hard. It just took a little bit of finesse trying to uh, pull the wire at the same time that you're pushing down. So it's kind of hard to do that with just one hand. There is a special tool you could use, but a screwdriver got the job done. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could just cut the wires and, and splice your wires differently. But if you can get the pins out, that's a much cleaner way to do it. Now, while I let the footage run in hyperspeed here in the background, let's go over some administrative stuff. What kind of tools do you need for this project? Really, almost nothing. You won't need your multimeter. I already did that work for you. You don't need a sound meter unless you want to just test things. But you will need a Phillips screwdriver to get the original screws out and screw your new screws in. And you're going to need like a flathead screwdriver or something similar so you can pluck out those fan pins. Now, as for what items you're going to need for this project, you're going to need three replacement fans and the screws to put those fans in or some other method of securing those fans. You could use other things other than screws if you wanted to. And that's really about it. Now, when it comes to the fans, you have two choices. The popular fan here is the Sun on Maglevs, and it comes in a 10 CFM and a 6 CFM version. People have used both, um, but I think the overall recommendation is to go with the 10 CFM version. It'll be a little bit louder, but still way quieter than the stock fans, and it's going to give you the comfort of knowing you have a little bit more cooling power. I'm actually using the 6 CFM fans in this video, and they're dead, dead silent once installed, as you'll see at the end. Um, and I'm getting really great temperatures with it as well, but I'm not loading the PoE switch very much. I'm only running two devices on PoE, and I knew I could get away with it, but if I was using, say, 24 ports of PoE, definitely I'd probably want the 10 CFM fans. So, of course, you know you can go down to the video description, and I'll have all the tools and parts listed down there, as well as the links where you can go buy them. Those are affiliate links, so if you want to click on those to go buy something on Amazon, that gives me a little something back, and I use that money to buy the stuff I do these videos with. So it's a nice self-feeding cycle. So I kind of already ruined the surprise. It was a surprise to me. I said you need to buy screws for the fans, and because the fans themselves don't come with the screws. And as you can see, the video took a jump, because what I had to do is run to Home Depot and go buy some screws for these fans, because the original screws for the fans are on the switch, do not fit our new fans. They're too small and they won't actually hold the fan in place. So what I ended up doing was trying to first find the information online and I was not able to find it as far as what screw size I need. I did find a blueprint for the fan. It was hand drawn by the manufacturer, but it wasn't legible. It said like four millimeters or something was the size, but it had tolerances. So it wasn't a surefire bet. So I went ahead and took the fan with me to Home Depot. And then I used the actual display where they have the different screw sizes to test and see what fit. Now the number eight screws were just a little bit too small. They almost fit, but there's no friction. So that wasn't really a good choice. The next step up was number 10. It was snug, uh, but because of the way the display is set up at Home Depot, you can't actually screw it in. So I ended up just buying the number 10 screws thinking maybe they'll work, but I also made sure that I had a contingency plan in case they didn't work. And I brought the, bought the number eight screws at a one inch and one quarter length and it has the bolt and the nut so that I can tighten it from both sides. Once I got home and I tried the number 10 screws, they were a little bit too snug for me to feel comfortable tightening them in. So I ended up using the contingency plan and those number eight screws, again, one inch, one quarter, with the nut on the other end, that worked perfectly well. It actually works beautifully. So actually I would highly recommend you just go that route. Now something to keep in mind, and I did get this right, but I just wanna make sure I save somebody the heartache, is that you do need to make sure you get pan head screws. The way those are tapered at the end, it keeps them nice and flush with the back of the switch. The way that the lid on this particular switch fits, the actual back of it has to go right on top of the screws rather than the screws actually sticking out of the back. So if you use the machine screw, it would have too much uh, of the actual screw head sticking up and you wouldn't be able to put the switch back together. So at this point, we kind of have all the uh, technical difficulties worked out. We've got a way to fasten down the fans. We've got the fan wires in the right order. It's just a matter of tidying everything up, getting our wire management snapped back down into place. And then we're going to go back to real time here in a moment. So you can hear the before from earlier in the video and compare it to the now that we've done the fan mod.
So those aren't very loud at all. Actually, only like 52 decibels at startup, which even that at full speed is almost acceptable, uh, especially once you put it on the rack and have a lid on. Let's see how it goes once they cool down here in a second. So there you have it, the fan modification project was a complete success. Let's go over some of our figures. So before we started, I measured about 75 decibels at startup as far as noise, about 55 decibels when it was running after it had spooled down. After the modification, it was about 55 decibels or quieter at startup, and it wasn't even detectable once it spooled down. My actual ambient noise levels in the house were louder than the switch. The temperatures, before the modification, I had about 39 degrees on sensor A and 33 degrees on sensor B. Those temperatures are in Celsius. After the modification, I have 50 degrees Celsius on sensor A and 42 and a half degrees on sensor B. So the temperatures did go up a little bit, but not very much at all. Now, as far as how the fans perform, um, I'm using, again, the six CFM model. I could have gotten the 10 CFM model and gotten even better performance for just a little bit more noise Based on how quiet these are, I wouldn't hesitate to get the 10 CFM fans. When I hit 56 degrees Celsius, the fans will actually go into stage two and they start spinning faster. So I'm not even close to the point where the fans need to spin faster. So I have more cooling capacity on standby should the switch ever get hotter than what it is right now. So in closing, I just wanna say I hope everyone enjoyed the video and you learned something from it or at least found it fun to watch. If you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to ask those questions down there in the comments section and I'll answer those questions for you. I've been keeping a good eye on those lately as I'm really getting back into the YouTube thing. I've been having a lot of fun doing this stuff when I get time to record. Again, in the video description, I'll have all the tools and items and the links and necessary information. Other than that, again, reach out to me if you guys need anything, you want to see anything, and I'll be there for you. This is Vicious, and I'll see you next time.